All right. Welcome to today's CES meeting. And the agenda topic of the day is planning future CES meetings um, and maybe taking a short topic off the top of the list for uh, the latter part of today's meeting. Um, I will share my screen. Uh, so uh, the first thing is uh, Alex very kindly pointed out that the next couple of uh, the next couple of CES meetings coincide with standard winter winter holidays holidays this year. Um, do we wish to meet in the next couple of weeks? Seems like a good place to start. Do we wish to not meet in the next couple of weeks? I'm available to meet, and if we if we have a critical mass of people who are available and would like to meet, I would like to to meet. If we if the if the total is below critical mass, I I would uh, I I would drop out as well. Okay. Um, does anybody else have any feelings on this? Why uh, would people be available? Uh, I'd be available. Uh, the I suspect we'll have a, a lower attendance, um, which might influence our, our choice of topic. Um, you know, it might be better to, if we do meet during that time to have something which is kind of uh, lower priority or, or more sort of open-ended and brainstormy and less, uh, um, nothing, you know, nothing is gonna be conclusive. All right, um, let's, oh, I propose- I'm available the 23rd, but prefer not the 30th. 23rd, but not 30th. Okay. I'm going to be uh, taking off those times. So the topics that I'm involved in wouldn't be good to schedule those days. Yeah. Okay. That, sound, that sounds about right. I think that what we ought to do, uh, I propose that we um, leave the meetings on the, uh, on the agenda or leave the meetings to be plan uh, to be on the schedule, um, but plan no specific topics for the next two weeks. Um, and uh, um, and so the remainder of our agenda planning begin in the next year. Does that sound about right? That sounds about right to me. Okay. Uh, Can you guys hear me? I did not hear you at all, Alex. Okay, you I need to sign off and come back on. All right, go. See you soon. So we'll meet for the next couple of weeks, but not have a uh, fixed agenda. Um, okay, so that's, uh, we have a placeholder for realms updates. Um, uh, Leo, did you? Uh, yeah, I can give some uh, quick updates. Uh, they're not going to be so precise as Karidi uh, has a, an agenda conflict. He's not going to be able to be here today. Um, Do you wish to, uh, so this is agenda planning. Do you wish to schedule a good time for a realms update or? Um, we, oh, we sorry, I set the placeholder in the wrong place. Oh, okay. Um, we could probably set some agenda planning for for January before the meeting, uh, but also if you if you want, uh, you can give some updates. Uh, I just have a calendar constraint. I'm gonna need to leave at ten thirty Pacific time. Okay. Uh, so in the next ten minutes. Uh, okay, then let's uh, let's return to agenda planning after ten thirty. That sound good. All right. Uh, well, yeah, go ahead and take it away. Um, okay. Uh, so just quick updates. We're still working with Google Chrome. Uh, Shu, Shu is currently uh, part of the V8 team. He's, he represents the V8 team, although uh, there is a lot of discussion, uh, as far as I know, from the Google, uh, for, from the Chrome platform in general, like all the teams um, discussing about this, there has been some pushback internally as we we, we already knew it. Um, and she is, is still trying to advocate. We are doing a lot of feedback here and there, back and forth. Um, 
one of the things that you suggest, I don't think we need to worry too much because we are showing uh, artifacts how this doesn't work at all. Uh, they kind of like try to propose some uh, synchronous IPC, some synchronous post messaging. Um, I don't like that idea. Uh, we showed like some uh, problems with it and that's actually something that replaces uh, realms, uh, which is not the direction I, 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 I want to take. Um, we showed some arguments, we show like some problem problematics with garbage collectors, how we actually keep track of uh, to make room for garbage collector to happen, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think the, the, the point that we can uh, be more productive in this meeting here is one of the things that we shortly discussed in the previous meetings. Uh, there's been uh, a sense of uh, what should we include f as the globals for each new synthetic realm. And by synthetic realm, I just mean like the realms we create through the realms API. And uh, uh, there was first a thought on like including other uh, web platform APIs um, into the new synthetic realms to uh, most of them like from tax processing, etc. cetera. Uh, but yeah, there is a valid argument on like the realm should be clean at default. My honest goal is actually to not block the realms proposal and I can even make some uh, room for this. But there has been another uh, direction that is actually shown as acceptable as limiting the, the intrinsics we give to the realms. And I love to collect the feedback here. Um, so the idea is actually the realm, each new synthetic realm should have less globals than uh, are already shown um, from the intrinsics from ECMAScript. Um, but let me make sure I understand the the um, the the candidates for um, uh, globals beyond what's currently in uh, the JavaScript standard. Uh, uh, things like the text processing, all of those things, as previously discussed, would be uh, uh, powerless. Would have no hidden mutable state. Would have no hidden I/O abilities, and therefore, if transitively frozen. Uh, could be shared with no communication channel. Is that all correct? I'm not sure if I follow. Wait, uh, can, can, I, can I back yes. up? I think Leo's Liz, Liz raised a couple of points and there's sort of, uh, she, she was described that the kind of higher order point is this question about synchronous post message and the global object one is sort of a, a minor one. I wonder if we could talk about these in this in that kind of priority order because I think I, I think I that... believe I believe we should skip the synchronous post message message right now because there is a lot of other problems with post message that we uh, I believe this in this meeting here we will just become an echo chamber on how we despise it and how it it looks hideous uh, <laughs> like as a champion of the proposal okay. I'm not really going for uh, the synchronous post messaging. I'm really trying to get rid of it. Uh, like, I, I don't like it uh, at all. And I'm really trying not to like make arguments for it right now. Um, not that I don't there, like it. It, it, it doesn't seem to work. I think there's there, a- there was, yeah. there was a thing that I wanted to clarify about that idea, just so everyone here is sure. following it that uh, the idea is that there's no shared memory between the different realms, that there's no shared references, that they can only use this post message part. So it's about, it's not about adding a capability of post message, but about removing this fundamental thing that realms can directly reference things in, in other realms. Um, they, so so are, are they uh, thinking of turning off same origin iframes in the browser? Uh, no, but they think that that was kind of a mistake, maybe, and that uh, they don't want to, you know, make the problem worse by adding this. That's the theory. So, 
Yeah. So yeah, the, the thing that's invented yesterday that nobody has critically examined uh, always starts off without all of the problems of the things that people have thought about for a while. Which thing? The um, synchronous post message. Um, it's, uh, I think part of the reason it looks attractive is because um, uh, it's had so little examination. Um, and it's one of these things that sometimes happens, which is, you know, you've got something that's a proposal that people understand the pros and cons, and then you have a, a new unexamined fantasy and nobody knows the flaws yet so that it, 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 it starts off looking more attractive than it should. Yeah, so I, uh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't want to take the discussion off course if, if Leo, you know, has, has judged that this echo chamber, you know, that we would all agree on it. Yeah. But yeah. for the, about this more minimal built-in object thing, the idea was one, one option is that we would include some of these powerless, meaningful across different uh, hosts, um, you know, built-ins beyond the ones defined by TC39, we would, we would allow hosts to include those and do a sort of loose standardization kind of effort to, to try to align platforms. The other option was, I don't think we can conclude whether it's acceptable yet because we've only really heard Mozilla's view on it, that Anna personally proposed that we have a smaller set of globals than even what TC39 proposed. Basically, the, Anna's feeling was that it would be weird for us to include, say, encode URI, but not, um, you know, A64 encoding. Um, there's, just for, there's nothing... for, for uh, like, even for, to add some shortness, um, Anna would be suggesting to, trying to remove the API-like, um, Built-ins that are not necessary to run any code. I tried to set up some uh, quick list here, and this quick list of like just for uh, well-known intrinsic objects, and I tried to highlight those we actually gonna need. Probably date is a mistake. Uh, we could probably cut this out, uh, but I tried to highlight in green those we still gonna need as like for minimum functionality uh, for general syntax. And this is in a manner of like an actual realms we are talking about, like the not, not forget about synchronous IPC. Please forget about synchronous IPC for what it's worth. Um, uh, uh, could you paste that, uh, that link again? Oh, yeah, I think. I didn't understand how to interpret this list. Is this a list of things to include or exclude or what? Sorry, I, I think I, in order to share this, I need to make a copy outside of my Salesforce account. Oh. I cannot share with like everyone with the link. Uh, Okay, can you just copy the text? I'm doing it right now. And, right. Uh, okay. Okay, thank you. I can see that. Yeah, could you describe what it means for things to be in this list? I don't understand uh, what this document is saying. I try to highlight things that we still need in the realm, like we still need available for minimal uh, syntax usage, like to not to not block any syntax like oh. usage. And so you're are, saying green means excluded and white means excluded? No, green means uh, included. I'm trying to be like just <laughs> being an inclusive list. Like we need a function constructor. We need uh, the errors uh, constructors, Boolean constructors, uh, big int constructors, because we have like the, the literals uh, for some of those, et cetera, et cetera. Same thing for like for promise, because we need uh, uh, 
async function API. Uh, it relies on the promise constructors uh, and built-ins, uh, regular expression, etc. Okay. And, uh, and also intrinsics that are not available in the global, but I just tried to highlight them. Could, could you could you make public uh, Leo? Could you make public the ability to comment rather than just view on the doc? I think I did it. Uh, no, uh, yeah, I think anyone on the link on the oh, internet with this me. link can comment. Yeah, maybe okay, you need good. to reload good. it. Sorry. No, I got it. I got it. That's good. Thanks. Okay. I'm finding it very strange that date is included and lots of the purely computational things are excluded. Uh, date is the only thing that's included that I would exclude. Uh, yeah, I can exclude. Uh, my, my big question is uh, how does it feel? How does it look? Uh, uh, it, actually it, looks like, it actually looks like a good start. I think it's, it's a little bit smaller than I would have. I mean, that's why I asked for comment is I'm, I'll go ahead and annotate the things that I'm, I would be inclined to include even in a minimal list. But data is definitely something I would exclude. What? So yeah, I, would, I, I thought light means exclude, and so data is excluded. Yeah, green means include, white means exclude. Right. So it looks like date. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm probably looking at the wrong version. Uh, I just did... removed the highlight for date. Oh, I just okay. removed the highlight for date. Yeah. Uh... Oh, so that. do you think that we should be going at the, at the class granularity or should we also go at the method granularity? Ooh, ooh, uh, ooh. I th oh, so it, it would, there, there's an, so like take aggregate error, which is thrown by promise dot all, I think, or any, I don't recall which. Um, that any. would probably have it's, to be it's, uh, Yeah. Yeah, it's promise dot any. Uh. So I have just one question about the prototype chain. Like if it's not included in a realm, are, are you saying that you're just defaulting to the uh, top level instance of it? Or like what happens if you need to instantiate one of those objects somehow with realm code? Um, is that saying it doesn't exist? You have to endow it on the realm or like, I, so endowment won't work um, for realm uh, for this kind of thing, uh, which kind of is so, so in order for this set to be grown optionally implies using shims inside of that realm in order to bring them into existence, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh. So virtualization would be highly encouraged. Yeah, I think. The intrinsics would would just be there, right? It's they they there might not be a, a means of accessing them, but but there's nothing special about about these realms where they would be denied intrinsics documented in the spec. But that this is the proposal from Anna that they some of these intrinsics could just not be created in the spec in the huh. in the creation of the realms. Yeah. Daniel, can you clarify the motivation for a restricted subset and how it relates to the other Mozilla requirement that the realm, the, in, the, the, the intrinsics available in a realm be unsurprising to common web developers and not require them to understand the difference between TC39 and the web? Uh, yeah, the motivation is because they believe that the TC39 versus web specs is not a legitimate place to draw the line. We could draw the line if it's based on something principled, such as the, the sort of principle that we came to last, last meeting, or, the or another principle would be that we exclude uh, it, almost everything that we can. So I think, I think this document does not exclude almost everything that we can, because for example, it includes array prototype map uh, which, you know, you can get away without it. You could probably fill that, but then there are some things that, that you need because they're, um, you know, they're just reachable from everything like type error. 
is, is the and answer. so this isn't quite the line that I think Anna was proposing, where he was saying like really, really, really minimal, like it really can't do almost anything. Yeah, I, I think that I think that we could clarify that principle. That is, is, is we could construct a principle that is the set, the the absolute minimal set of language features necessary to build all other language features um, through shims. Uh, yet yeah, through shims or empowerment from an uh, from outside the realm, anyway. Um, I I wonder at what the practical effect of that political decision would be. My, my, my impression is that that would uh, eliminate a political barrier that would have to simply be fixed elsewhere, right? Um, because I think that the overarching concern that it would be confusing to reveal a realm constructor to the open web that is effectively useless without virtualizing everything. Um, e yeah, so this, this is, to be clear, this is a much lower order concern than the concern that, uh, that um, Leo started the, the conversation with, because the higher order concern is whether we want to have realms at all. Mm -hmm. And I guess uh, well, we, won't, we won't get feedback from everybody on what should be in the global until that broader question is answered. Sure, I, I think that what, the, what this what, so the practice. I think that what the, what we're looking at is a proof by contradiction uh, that they're proposing that this is a reasonable stance, but it is also an intractable stance. Whereas there are other, so we have to choose between reasonable and untractable. And they're, they're, I think they're trying to create an argument that we have to choose between intractable, intractable. Um, but reasonable or unreasonable, but intractable. <laughs> oh, I think that's happening elsewhere. Like the, the synchronous post message case might be an instance of that. But I think here, and I actually think that this would be a decent programming model. He said that he proposed this for, uh, for what's it called, uh, worklets. Hmm. But that was uh, not adapted. He didn't convince people. So the fact that he didn't convince people in the work clip case, where there was no need to, you know, talk with us, kind of bodes poorly for this being adopted in the, the realm case. But I, I thought Salesforce was saying that this would work for them. Well, it's manageable. Am I saying it's uh, like it's a manageable work around uh, what I want for what I want like for what I wanted here in this meeting is to make sure uh, this is actually acceptable 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 to start discussing with like I, I had the the feeling I could come over uh, with this idea and people say like this is a hard no uh, but it doesn't. It, it seems like something that we can discuss and find a, a, a good uh, point. If we do have this, I'm gonna work in actually creating a better concise list. I'm gonna try to rank those, and and try to say like what is that the actual minimal, uh, and I'm gonna try to subjectively judge, saying like this is my actual minimal. Uh, these are the other like subset. And this is like the whole, uh, the whole stuff. Um, I think if we get this with some, uh, w if we get, it, it, it's uh, horrible to say this, but I think if, if we get Anna to agree with this, it's a buy-in from, from them. There is a potential buy-in from them to accept this. So that makes it like even easier for the process we are currently having with Google. From, I think from discussing with other people in Mozilla, my understanding is that Mozilla is also going through a similar discussion internally to what to what Google is. I don't think it's yeah. only. I don't. Well, I don't think this global issue is the only thing that Mozilla is concerned about. But alleviates the process. That's my hope. And to get this process like a little bit easier, 
because it's not being easier. I just want to unblock realms because we, yeah. like for what yeah. our <laughs> usage, we really need to have realms shipping. And uh, if we can manage, <laughs> if we can manage those, it's like, yeah, we can go with it. This is still like a, a better picture than the actual uh, option of using iframes. Well, I think from that perspective, I don't, I, I think that, I think that this group, uh, well, it, 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 I don't think anyone here is a hard no on this. I, I find, and it's actually intellectually interesting to find out what is the minimal JavaScript yeah. actually. Um, but uh, uh, so if, if, if this helps you make progress, I think, I think and, that's uh, supportive. Th this uh, gets me a lot of inspiration from, uh, I remember a, a night I had pizza with Chip and uh, Mark where Mark for, uh, showed me like SES uh, and all the like the barriers and everything. That kind of brings me uh, to those memories where I'm trying to like create some of those barriers. But I totally, I am aware uh, I'm being more subjective on this. I'm not saying uh, this is not, this includes some emotion, like what I want to include or not. Uh, because right now I just want to ship realms. I would be pretty fine with intrinsics. That's my actual feeling, but yeah. So there's Weird. just the one thing about, uh, like you can shim a lot of things, uh, performance wise, you will get a hit, but uh, if you need to use typed arrays, you are going for performance, you are going for, um, um, you know, uh, magic basically, um, aside from the uh, JavaScript, uh, JavaScript's um, you know um, ease of, of programming, you, you're really trying to get computation fast. So that basically means a realm is a place where you do other things. But if you want to do computation heavy, um, like for me, it's in it processing. But I know it's like there there are a lot of other reasons why you use type arrays. Um, and, and so, so I think it kind of like says realms are useful for certain applications, but it, it really closes the door for, for them to be um, useful in, in, you know, a lot of other applications. Um, um, it was just a, a point of order. Leo, you are 12 minutes over your hard stop. I <laughs> yeah something. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm just flagging uh, the the type to raise as a performance hit just for my thank you just for a reference and to not forget that. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for running yeah, through I'll this. Just, uh, 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 yeah, before yeah, you go, go I'll just I'll just mention that. Um, uh, there is a, for, for the Jesse effort, Jesse being a tiny subset of CESS, uh, we did put together a whitelist, which I'm having trouble finding right now. Uh, but the whitelist is, is essentially the subset of the SES whitelist. Uh, the SES whitelist is approximately the same as all the globals and properties defined in uh, ECMA 262. But the Jesse, the Jesse whitelist is, is a tiny subset of that that's supposed to be adequate for, uh, for programming. So I will find that. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll take a look and I, yeah, I'll, I'll bring this up for type two race. I just flagged them right now. I should probably be including them and in, uh, given this argument, like why we actually have a type two race. Uh, yeah. It's, the, it's, it's the same reason why we have them in next script. Yeah. If, if the principle is to include, uh, the, the subset from which the rest can be built. I think typed arrays do need to be in there. Yeah. Um, are, do typed arrays expose envy in this? They do. Yes, they do. Okay. okay. Uh, specifically data view, I think. Uh, oh, you, you can fetch they, those from typed arrays as well. You yeah. can fa uh, you can get them like from switching uh, flow to right, right, or, okay. or anything to eight bits, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, thank you.
Yep. Hey, Leo. All right. Um, let's see. So uh, returning to agenda planning, um, let's see. Uh, so uh, three weeks out, uh, Daniel, did you want to put time on the agenda for um, module bundling? Uh, yeah. Uh, is, uh, can you? Uh, uh, does that touch on CES or possibly the compartment proposal? Uh, I don't. I don't think so. There was one aspect that that might a little bit if we want to have module formats that that indirect through the module map though my um my feeling at this point is that we want to have them indirect through the uh through like a lower host layer like where resources are, are fetched but uh that's that's sort of how they connect okay. um that's a that's a legitimate thing to like debate about what what the layer of indirection for identifying resources should be. So we could, we could do that in different ways. Okay, uh, I haven't looked up the exact date. I'll, uh, that's probably first week of January. Um, I'll, uh, I, I, I will uh, put a date on that and give you a ping uh, to verify. Um, uh, evaluator module attributes. That is certainly um, compartment relevant. Um, is there a time that we'd like to discuss that? Do you want to put that on week four? It, um, what, what is it? I think that this is, a, 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 I'll allow Dan, Dan, Daniel, go ahead. Uh, so this is like, you know, we have import assertions which which should be you know oh. factored through the, the compartment proposal, but that's just an assertion. These attributes are about oh. um, changing the interpretation of the module, so they would be part of the cache key. Okay, sure, because you it's creating a different module. Well, one thing that we could do, and if somebody has time to do the ba uh, the, the the background work, is uh, we haven't yet explicitly um, explored the what well, we have we haven't concretely explored the the implications of even module assertions on the compartment API um, so perhaps a good way to discuss evaluator attributes as well as assertion attributes is to um, frame them in terms of the compartment API to explore what they mean um, and to that end, maybe we can't give this a, uh, oh, there's some background work I think that we need to do before we put it on the, the agenda to have that conversation. Do you, does, does that sound good though? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious what what your thoughts there are. So I'm, I'm definitely not in a rush on this proposal. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, there was a conversation about guards a long while back, and uh, and in oh. particularly that we wanted to revisit guards with Valdemar on the call. Yeah, I, I still believe that. Like, yeah, I've gotten negative feedback from several different people about guards, though, since oh. then. So um, people are skeptical of making such a general type. I mean, it's the same. It's the same arguments that were presented in two thousand fourteen. But TypeScript has sort of won even more at this point, and people are skeptical of introducing a different kind of sense of types. However, simultaneously, there's a lot of interest in a more limited kind of typed object, which uh, doesn't, which isn't based around a more general guard concept. So, I was wondering if if we want to follow up on this topic, there's there's all these different things that are kind of intertwined. With Decorators, guards, and typed objects. Are guards, so, um, are, is the prior art, do, does the prior art of guards go back to like designed by contract in Eiffel or something like that? Yes. 
I see. Yeah, exactly. Well, I don't really know a lot about Eiffel, but it's uh, about, yeah, having these assertions. Uh, sure. Um, the the uh, guards that Waldemar and I proposed were based on the guards in E. The guards in E were certainly influenced by the contract checking in Eiffel, uh, but um, The contract checking in Eiffel is very much um, around preconditions and postconditions of methods on interfaces, um, whereas guards are are, are just um, uh, by on bindings and, and assignments. Um, so the, the, there, the big difference is that the preconditions can check multiple different arguments and their relationships, but no. guards cannot. Check those guards are scoped to just one value, right? Is that that's correct? I see. Yeah, and you can also put guards on variable declarations uh, and property declarations, as well as parameters and return results. Um, so it's it's. I would say it's no more than inspired by Eiffel. It's not really Eiffel-like. I see. Yeah, so it doesn't go on to say, to generalize to um, like invariants. Uh, it does uh, to some degree, uh, but well, they're uh, very variable variants. That is, very, very single variable invariants. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that that will at least be an interesting conversation, even if it isn't something that we can, um, uh, even if it isn't actionable. Um, and it would yeah. be it would be great to give Valdemar a place to talk about it again. Okay. Uh, it is interesting when you bring up TypeScript, TypeScript did in the last year or two uh, introduce a interesting bridge between dynamic type checking and static types, uh, which is in the, um, uh, uh, the unknown type as opposed to the any type where you have to do a dynamic test before you can statically Use the um, the use it as a typed value. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff about TypeScript. I'm kind of early in my process of learning about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that you know, all of us at Agoric are um, learning uh, the JS doc TypeScript dialect. Which I really love. I think it's it's really as as other people have commented, it's really the best of both worlds. It keeps the JavaScript just the JavaScript you write is the JavaScript that runs. Um, it just has JavaScript semantics, but then there's this whole other JS doc thing on the side that really gives you uh, types enough for this for the static ch type checking for catching errors early and for the IDE support. So it's re it's really a nice sweet spot. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I think that that, that, that probably, um, is enough for agenda planning for the next month. Uh, it would be really great if we could, uh, pull up some topics or get folks to volunteer to do presentations on, on further topics that are close to our interests. So if anybody wants to do, uh, to present on like Michael, if you want to, pre uh, to present on progress with microbium or, um, well, Alex is not here, but uh, if, if there's further work on uh, uh, on membranes, it would be good to, it would be great to get uh, more engagement on those topics too. Um, my, my intention is to, uh, well, as soon, as soon as I have some, uh, as soon as I have some progress to talk about on uh, compartments, uh, I'd like, I'd like to bring that back as well. Uh, uh, yeah, in particular, on, idly on the back of my mind is that another uh, one thing that was made clear last week when we talked about um, WebAssembly and compartments is that they are seeking to use compartments as uh, as, as a, a dependency injection in container, um, and to that end, compartment maybe. Uh, 
maybe is a container. Maybe container is a good name for compartment if it would give us some more. Um, so what do people mean by container? Uh, dependency injection container. So I, I, uh, I don't know what dependency injection folk mean by container. Yeah, um, it's a, a, a dependency injection container is uh, some, sometimes at the module layer, not actually not really usually. It's, a, um, it, it, it's, it's closely related though. It's an object in which every dependency by type um, gets one singleton. Um, in the way that modules are singleton, they are similar but not the same. Um, and and some and advanced dependency injection containers solve the two arm robot problem by allowing you to sometimes uh, have singletons on uh, the tuple of uh, the duple of name and uh, name and type. I think I don't know the two arm robot problem. Uh, a, a lot. One of the first things that you run into with uh, dependency injection containers that only memoize on or only yeah only have singletons uh, keyed on type is uh, that you can only create a robot that has one arm because arm is the type. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah. Uh, well. Anyhow. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll bring that up at a future meeting. In any case, it looks like we're, we're running close. Is there anything else anyone would like to add? Mark, was there? I, I think I cut you off, Mark. Oh, I'm just saying, I'm not wedded to the term compartment. If there's another term that causes there to be a large community that relates better to it, um, and doesn't have a substantial penalty, uh, I'm certainly you know, inclined to consider it. Yeah, and we, uh, and then weighing that against the momentum we already have with compartment. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, all right. I think that I'm going to call this for the agenda planning portion of the meeting and uh, and uh, and stop the recording. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you everyone. Okay, thanks.